Okay. Good afternoon. Thanks, members of the media, for coming out this afternoon. Um, I know that a number of your colleagues have another assignment, so it's good that we have several of you here with us this afternoon. With me, as you know, is our deputy political leader, Ms. Radhika Golbans. And um, let me first say that, um, you know, we want to commiserate and express, extend our and express our solidarity and support for all of those who were, were badly affected by the floods of last weekend. Um, we ourselves at the MSJ, quite a number of our activists um, were out in the field doing stuff from Saturday last week, um, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so on. We, we didn't try to do media publicity about what we were doing because we really think that this activity is about simply solidarity and helping and sharing and caring and not about scoring any political points. Um, but yesterday we did a collective effort. The other ones were done individually in most instances um, by our members and activists in different areas. Um, but yesterday we did a collective effort um, up in Sandy Grandy and Arima Wallerfield area. And um, I just want to, to thank publicly um, our members and members of the ODB2 working at Petrotrin, Trinma, Forest Reserve, other places, who in spite of being faced with the threat of not being in a job at the end of November, um, are in fact, and did in fact come out tremendously and contribute to the, to the drive that um, we had yesterday. And we were able to help quite a number of, of families and several communities yesterday up in the Sandy Grande region. So it is something that we have been doing quietly and it's not something that we you know, want to, to, to politicize or blow our trumpets about um, in terms of the MSG. Uh, but quite clearly, this major disaster, as previous disasters, have demonstrated that there's some important learnings that we have to adopt as a country going forward. And some of them we have spoken about previously, in fact, on many occasions, one of which is our specific idea to have a national infrastructure fund and a whole effort to address um, the mitigation of natural disasters, not only from storms and floods and so on, but also from earthquakes to ensure that we mitigate against those threats um, because we are extremely vulnerable to climate change and natural disasters. And we think that the entire country could be rallied behind a common program to address the threat of natural disasters and climate change, and that we could fund this out of our own local resources through a major bond issue that is for a national development fund to be managed um, very separately from the Ministry of Finance or any other government ministries to be managed in a similar way that the Heritage and Stabilization Fund is managed and so that we can engage the entire country, whether they live on the foothills of the Northern Range to address the problems of their communities or the floodplains of Karini to address the problems of their communities or elsewhere in the country that who are affected by coastal erosion and so on, that we have a major national effort, a reconstruction effort to deal with those problems that we have. And we are putting this forward once again as a big idea around which the entire country could be united and mobilize um, so that we can ensure going forward that we have safer, more sustainable communities and therefore people's lives can, can be better over the long term and so on. But it, it will probably take an MSJ government to do that because none of the other parties seem to understand that. They simply want to do minor works or throw blame one against the other. Quite apart from that, there are other specific things that have to be done in terms of proper planning, um, ensuring that we have a proper land use plan um, to make sure that we don't have construction on, on hillsides above a certain level so that we, do, we deal with the cumulative impacts of water runoff, that developers are not allowed to build on areas which are 
going to cause more flooding, that they're not allowed to, to block watercourses or to build over aquifers and all of these things. We have to have proper planning in this country. We have to have a beverage container law. We have to enforce our legislation and so on if we are to ensure that we can mitigate against, against possible problems. And in that regard, it has been reported that in 2009, and the media certainly should do the fact-checking on this, that the Greenvale project was in fact um, not approved by the Town and Country Planning Division of the Ministry of Planning, and we should find out as a country. There should be an investigation. We don't need a whole expensive commission of inquiry, but there should be a proper independent investigation to find out how the community of that housing project in Greenvale was allowed to be constructed, who was culpable in that regard, because quite clearly where it was constructed was not appropriate in terms of the threat of major flooding to, 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 that, to that community. Moving on from the issue of, of flooding and our own proposals, and we always like to offer proposals and so on, um, I want to address the issue of um, statements by the Commissioner of Police. Now, we know that there was a, a situation on Friday night where five young men, including two teenagers, were killed by the police in um, Chumacac and Lavantil. We don't have all of the facts, and really I'm not going to comment on on what took place there specifically. Um, the families and other residents have um, come forward and given statements about what they saw happening. The police have a different story, and um, the Police Complaints Authority has already announced that it is going to launch an investigation into this incident, and we await the findings of the Police Complaints Authority. In that regard, however, there are a couple of points that we want to, to make insofar as the PCA is concerned and then some comments about the, 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 the Commissioner of Police. With respect to the PCA, we once again, it's not for the first time, we made that call way back in 2014, I think it was, um, when Ms. Gillian Lucky was the director of the PCA, and we have repeated it subsequent to the um, appointment of Mr. David West as the director of the PCA. We are calling for the legislation to be amended to give the PCA more power and authority so that the PCA can conduct its own independent forensic investigations of incidents where there have been police, um, people killed by the police. Because the PCA now depends on the police to do the investigation and to get the forensic evidence and then provide the PCA with that. But obviously that is a case of, of himself investigating himself and that is, does not lead to a great confidence in an independent investigation of any killing or any incident where citizens allege that the police acted inappropriately or used inappropriate force. So we are saying the PCA must um, be given legislatively the power to do its own forensic investigation. Um, and this applies in other jurisdictions. Right here in the Caribbean, in Jamaica, the equivalent body of the PCA can do its own forensic investigation. In fact, it not only has the power to do so, it has the equipment to do so. And so we are saying the PCA must be strengthened in this regard so that we all can have confidence in the work of the police and so on. Um, and so we will await the PCA's investigation into the specific incident of people being killed, the five young men being killed in Trumacac in Lavantil. It, it is of concern though, where two teenagers were killed. Um, and, and this is something where um, we are not sure whether those teenagers themselves were, um, and this of course is what the PCA investigation and, and other investigations have to find out, whether the teenagers themselves were involved in any alleged shootout with the police and so on. But it's very sad that we had two teenagers being, being killed. And we want to then say that the statements by the Commissioner of Police are statements that should give all right-thinking citizens pause for concern because we are in a situation where citizens are faced with the threat of violence 
by criminal elements. We have had now, I think, 430 or 40, I didn't check what the latest number was, um, persons being killed this year. And that is a completely unacceptable situation of crime and of violence in the country. And, and the MSJ does not in any way condone or support crime and violence um, committed by, by the criminal element. We don't support that at all. However, we cannot become so fearful of the situation or so angry about the crime and violence that we then accept what could become a police state because that is not a solution either. That is not a solution either. So that the solution to the problems of crime and violence are several fold. It involves the criminal justice system, which is, is failing this country. It is failing if the police cannot arrest and get to conviction more than 10% of persons who have committed murders. So 90% of the murders are going unsolved. The majority of violent crime is going unsolved. Um, the court system is failing because there are 500 people in jail awaiting trial for murder, and only 25 people perhaps are actually brought to trial in any one year. So that is going to take 20 years just to clear the backlog, quite apart from new people who are going to be brought before the court. So the court system has failed. The system of policing is failing to bring to, 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 to the courts persons who have um, committed murders or violent crimes. So the, the criminal justice system has collapsed, has failed. We have a crisis in the prisons and so on. So, so we are, those things have to be fixed. Um, and so many other things have to be fixed. Uh, white collar crime is being um, taking place with impunity. Nobody goes to jail really for white collar crime. Uh, which white collar crime is often behind some of the brutal murders and, and acts of violence and so on. So we have a system that needs to be fixed. We have an education system that is failing our young people. 40% of our young people did not get any CSEC passes in May and June. So that, that is happening year after year after year. And so we have an education system that is failing our young people and so on. All of these things have to be addressed. The sense of alienation, of discrimination, of feeling excluded from this society. All of those things have to be fixed. Um, and the solution to those things is not a police state. Not a police state. And, and therefore, when you have statements by the commissioner of police about cock, these people are cockroaches that have to be squashed and not citizens of Trinidad and Tobago and so on, who have particular rights and responsibilities. When you have statements by the Commissioner of Police after the UE incident that um, where a student was pinned to the ground with, by a police officer with his knee in the student's on his neck and holding a, 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 an assault weapon in, in, around his shoulder and in his, on, in his arm and other police officers armed with assault rifles and as well as sidearms and so on. And the Commissioner of Police speaks about the police are going to be like Rottweilers, um, which, are de which is dehumanizing to the police officers themselves. But we know a Rottweiler is a, could be an attack dog, which is just trained to attack without thought, without consideration of the circumstances. That's a very dangerous signal that the Commissioner of Police is sending to the men and women under his command, quite apart from being demeaning of them as, as, as officers and as people. And when, when the Commissioner of Police says that um, you have to get permission from him to protest, that is wrong. Citizens have the right to protest. You don't apply to the Commissioner of Police to protest and to placard and to, to protest and so on. If you go that route, then what you have is police rule in the country, and that is a police state. And those of us who are concerned about justice and about rights have to warn against these things, because if we don't warn about it now, and they're allowed to develop, by the time they develop, it becomes too late. 
And so there'll be people who will attack us for that. We are prepared to uh, take those attacks on because we have to speak truth to power. And the nature of our political system locks citizens out of decision making. So when people don't get water and their roads are bad and the schools are breaking down and so on and so on and so on, and people therefore protest about those conditions which should not exist, they are then being criminalized. And there is something called the criminalization of protest. And it happens in very right-wing, conservative, neoliberal states in many parts of Latin America and so on. And we want to warn about the criminalization of protests because the criminalization of protests will mean that citizens who are protesting about real problems that they have will become, will be made into criminals. Rather than saying we need to fix the political system to give people power to be able to have their problems resolved so that they wouldn't have to protest, we want to criminalize them for protesting against wrongdoing that they are experiencing as citizens, and we have to say that we are against that. So we are warning the Commissioner of Police about all of these things. And lastly, and let me just get a letter. Just, just hold on a second. I wrote to the I'll probably find it after you all have left. Okay. I was going to read from the letter, but it's, it's, it's not absolutely necessary. I probably have it on my desk. I, I wrote to the Commissioner of Police about a month ago with respect to the issue, and some of you all would have gone down to six company in Maruga, you remember that. And the PCA had done an investigation into the incident with respect to um, one Sergeant Ram Logan, who had taken a hose from a fire truck and turned it on people who were protesting about the conditions of their road and physically assaulted them and occasioned physical harm to, to a number of the residents down there. And I wrote to the PCA to the then Acting Commissioner of Police, to the DPP about this matter, and so on. The PCA did investigate, and about three months ago, the PCA wrote to the residents affected, because we took them up, they gave evidence to the PCA, and so on, and they wrote to me, the PCA, indicating that they had recommended to the Commissioner of Police that he take disciplinary action against Sergeant Ram Logan in accordance with the police regulations, and they had recommended to the Director of Public Prosecutions that um, criminal charge be laid against Sergeant Ram Logan for assault. Now, subsequent to getting that letter from the PCA, and we had a media conference down in Six Companies, some of you were there for that, um, I then wrote to the then Acting Commissioner, Mr. Stephen Williams, and to the Director of Public Prosecutions, um, Senior Counsel Roger Gaspard, and I called on them to take action in accordance with the recommendations of the PCA. I received no um, no acknowledgement of those letters. And then subsequent to my writing, Mr. Williams, he shortly thereafter demitted office and Mr. Griffith was appointed commissioner. I then wrote to Mr. Griffith, attached all of the relevant correspondence and so on, going back to the very first report that I made to him, well, no, sorry, to the acting commissioner and to the DPP and to the PCA and the report of the PCA and asked Mr. Griffith to deal with this rogue police officer um, Mr. Ram Logan. Now, Mr. Griffiths has come out on a number of occasions shortly after he was made commissioner saying that he was going to deal with the rogue elements in the police service. I have received no acknowledgement from Mr. Griffiths, and so um, I'm publicly now calling on him to state what action he has taken in accordance with the recommendation of the PCA and the investigation done by them with respect to Sergeant Ram Logan, uh, because he cannot be talking about stamping on people like cockroaches and so on, which we say is wrong, but at the same time condoning rogue officers operating in the police service. And so publicly calling on him to address the issue that was brought to his direct personal attention by myself 
on behalf of the residents of Six Company. That's, that's all. Folder, but it's probably on my desk. Do you need it or not necessarily? You need it? All right, well, just give me one second. So I did say it was several weeks ago. In fact, it was almost a month ago. Three and a half weeks ago. Huh? Oh, sorry, the 20th. You're right. Sorry, Che. Very good. <laughs> Very good. 20th. So that's more than a month ago. And this letter was hand delivered to the police administration building. Yeah? And I had all the attachments, which was um, the letter which I wrote on the 7th of August to then Acting Commissioner Stephen Williams and the letter from the PCA dated the 13th of June, which recommended, which I brought, I, we brought this previous information to the media, which recommended that Police Sergeant Ram Logan um, be, disciplinary action be taken for discreditable, discreditable conduct and breach of regulations and so on. So. Yes, if he has initiated charges, because the police commissioner can take disciplinary action against officers below the rank of, I think, assistant commissioner of police. Right? He doesn't have to wait on anybody. Okay? Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday.